Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. The only place you can find someone playing games so obscure that even YouTube and Twitch cannot identify them. Every episode, we really confuse the hell out of them. Let's see where we left off. It is May 1980, and we are in the arcade. We last took a look at Asteroids Deluxe, but we haven't played it yet. Let's boot it up and see what happens. Welcome, welcome everyone that's viewing tonight. We are gonna kick off Asteroids Deluxe in the arcade. Oh, and we got all the artwork, marquee at the top, side and control panel at the bottom. And it, it might be harder to see, so let's zoom in just a little bit. Uh, see if we can change the view and... Oh, we have so many different ones since it's so popular. So we have the a cocktail, there we go, wood grain cocktail for Asteroids Deluxe. <laughs> uh, love it. And you can see the different views, uh, instructions at the top. <laughs> RK Jeff, welcome, welcome. And, and instructions over on the, both sides, so two players can play. And we also have the, ow, oh, that's just the Xbox Live, I guess, uh, artwork. But here we go, there is the uh, cl uh, classic without the arcade marquee at the top, overlay uh, for the whole system, and then now at the bottom it's showing you uh, points for asteroids, the different sizes, and then the UFO, we got the large, small UFO, and then, as it said in the manual, the one that splits apart is called the Death Star. And then whenever it has little pieces, they have um, a few points for those. So it's, I love that it's explaining the instructions because it's it, it's so quaint, for something so iconic with asteroids, it's funny to see them explain how to play. Shoot to destroy rocks, saucers, and enemy sh ships for points. Collisions with rocks, saucers, bullets, even your own enemy ships will destroy you, so avoid them. Press and hold the shield button to protect your ship against um, collisions, and the shield is what's new with Asteroids Deluxe. That's what puts the Deluxe in. And then for a two-player game, they alternate, so not playing at the same time for this one. All right, so let's put a quarter in and see what it's like. There's one credit, and we go ahead and push start. Oh, it even lights up at the bottom. That's awesome. All right, so here we go. Controls are left, right, uh, fire. We have thrusters, and we should have, yes, yeah, shield. So in the original Asteroids, you had what they called hyperspace, which just warped you to another place. If you got into a, a pickle or a bind, of Asteroids were coming at you. But uh, looks fantastic. It, it appears like we're using color vector graphics, but it's actually just an overlay, making it appear like it's a different color. But, um, oh man, it sounds excellent. We even get the background music as well, well background thumping as well. But uh, breaking apart the asteroids, and uh, there's the small, smaller UFO. I think that's a smaller one. Oh, oh, and it got me before I used, could use the shield. <laughs> and your shrapnel just flies. So there it is, the Death Star. And as soon as we blow it up, yeah, they're coming after me, yeah. <laughs> Maybe the UFO will help me out, there we go. <laughs> so cool. I really enjoy the overlay on the background. Oh, it feels like we're, Oh, I thought I pushed the shield at the exact same time. So there you go, for one quarter, I was able to get three lives in. That's awesome. So, and and then, it, then it has you able to put your um, name in at the end, so gotta do C. C? Oh, it uses the shield button. C-H-R. There it is, and it saved it. So we have the uh, name that you put for, for the top. <laughs> and I am with you, five star for sure, yes. Now the original Asteroids, we gave five stars as well. I would say they improved on this with uh, the, the color over uh, color overlay and then the Asteroid overlay and then the, the different game modes, but uh, I, I'm with you, I, I'd say five stars as well. All right, so put another quarter in and starting it up. Yeah, it does have a very good uh, look to it, I love it. Yeah, the, the vector graphics, um, I, I wish they never went away. I really wish there wasn't a, a video game crash that ruined the uh, GCE Vectrex, the home console that allowed uh, vector graphics, because I, I think it would have, well, it still does. If you're familiar with any of the homebrew developers for the Vectrex, they're making games still for, for that system, and I wish it was more popular whenever it came out, but sadly it was right there at the crash of uh, in the North American market. So, um, uh, everything about this game 
uh, it, it, it just runs so well. Uh, it's taking what the original Asteroids had, and everything's bumped up a notch. It, it, it's so much fun to play. Sounds fantastic. Feels really good. And this is the, the golden age of arcade, so it's... <laughs> I did it again. I gotta do the shield right before they show up. <laughs> yes. And we will. We are gonna get to the Vectrex. We will survive the crash on Chronologically Gaming. Actually, there won't be a crash. Since we're doing this on a global scale with systems and computers all over the world, we're not going to really experience the crash. We're going to experience some pretty bad games for the Atari 2600 that uh, were, the, were some of the reasons for the crash. But for a global scale, we're going to have so much fun playing the home computer games that came from uh, the early 80s. And this is just the beginning. This is 1980. Oh, there it is, the Death Star. <laughs> All right, let's actually use the shield now. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, the UFO! <laughs> I was gonna say, the UFO helped us, and then it, it shot me and killed me. <laughs> that is right, yeah, only the US. And we've had uh, a few other arcade games, just a handful that allowed you to put your uh, initials in. And um, the such a great novelty, great idea, because the, the score was getting the high score was awesome and we had some arcade games that were displaying the high score space invaders is a great example where it showed the high score but there was no initials or name that you could put in for it all right i want to check out some more of the artwork that we have there we go so we could play with just the backdrop itself so it blows it up really big so you have a better view of the game let's put another quarter in and play some space invaders deluxe <laughs> That's true. They went in there uh, the bargain bin. Did they call it the bargain bin? Um, because I I'm familiar with the term, but is that a '90s term or was it was it called the bargain bin in the '80s? It would have been great to pick up games at that time when they were going for so cheap. But we shouldn't be talking about sad times right now. We're talking about. 1980, so it's the, the the good times. This is the best times, the best of times. Another thing that's great about this is since you can fire multiple shots off at once, it really gives you a, a better groove of uh, or, or you're you can you can get in the zone more in this game than, than the other ones because one shot at a time, uh, unless the enemies were close and you could uh, complete a shot and destroy them. Then you can keep going, but this one, because you can fire off multiple bullets at once... Oh, great, they hit the asteroids. <laughs> Die. There we go, now we're cooking. Oh no, I got some more. So, um... The farthest that I've been able to make it myself playing this game, if, if you know, we were dedicated on the channel, we're not gonna uh, play play games seriously to the point we're uh, gonna uh, master them. But the farthest I've gotten on this one was only about level 30, uh, which is is pretty impressive. But considering all the professionals that are out there, it's um, it's pretty meager. <laughs> oh, that's great. 99 cents. That's awesome. Something else to consider when we're playing games that are score based, um, the, the, the the really hardcore gamers at the time, uh, they, they, I don't want to say they died out, but it, it was a totally, it's a totally different dynamic when you think of someone who is playing um, professionally at, at this time. You know, someone that was in a, a smaller uh, arcade contest or competition, and uh, th those kinds of people that, that had the score-based games where you're playing the same game over and over again until it show until it, um... <laughs> oh, my shield ran out. I wasn't able to use it. Until you can play, uh, or, or get in the mindset of playing a game that's gonna continue over and over and over again, and then just pr get progressively more and more difficult, it, it is a completely different mindset. Go, go, go! <laughs> because nowadays professional gamers it, it's it's completely different and you, you have to think oh the smaller ufo is always harder not to shoot but just to hit <laughs> that's right yes and there are, still are nowadays it, it's not the same um 
for ones that are like professional Pac-Man or professional um, Burger Time. I'm just thinking of other examples of, of classic arcade games that just get progressively more and more difficult. Does anyone know whenever Pac-Man was first uh, crashed on level 256? When that was first discovered? Was that back in the 80s or was that more recent that it happened? Okay, so yeah, we're, we're cranking it up a little harder now. More more ships, more more things displayed on the screen. Asteroids are everywhere. <laughs> and then yeah, the, and that's the thing that always threw me, and that I love too. The UFO is shooting the asteroids, and they can break them apart. So it kind of messes you up when you realize, okay, I'm good. I have a few asteroids. They're, they're the big ones. They're the slow ones. But when the the UFO hits them, then it it throws you off. Because it's it's almost like you feel like you're playing with someone else. Oh, it was 80s. Awesome. <laughs> Game over. I oh, love it. So great. All right, going to put a score in here on this side, and then... Really enjoy the commentary. <laughs> oh, really? The king. Oh, that's right. Yes, uh, uh, the documentary on Pac-Man. Yes, that's right. Okay, so this was Asteroids Deluxe, and not sure why the community rated it three stars. We're gonna rate it five. Uh, uh, classic, iconic, and while we did rate Asteroids as five, we're, we're rating these on playing them at the time and based on you know like the if it's in the arcades or, or computer handhelds and so forth but this is uh, five stars for sure all right let's move on to our next game this is kamikaze let's take a look at the artwork for kamikaze here's our advertisement flyer uh from japan karateka we do it and better kamikaze from the name of the company, uh, it's Karateka, Karateko, one or two players, Kamikaze, highest operating income since video games were revealed. <laughs> That's what you need to put on every advertisement flyer. <laughs> the most exciting Space Wars video game on the market. So when you talk about genres of video games, at this time, there really wasn't a, a, a correct uh, wording of what a genre is, but space game was a big one. And this one describes it as a Space Wars video game. And there's the example of the arcade cabinet. And so, oh, th was this universal in the United States? Because this, yeah, this advertisement flyer is Japanese, is the Japanese flyer. Oh, okay, so that's the name of the developer. So, um... Yeah, the, the, the version we're playing, if it was developed in Japan, that's the one we're playing now. Because uh, we're, we're always going to play the first release that came out. And it looks like um, controls are just left, right, and fire. That's what we've seen for uh, shooters. And there's our screenshot. Full color. Love it. K Kirateko. Okay. All right. So this, we have any other versions? We do have another version called Cosmo Killer. Uh, but we're going to play Kamikaze. It is May 1980. This is Kamikaze, developed by Konami. And it looks like um, it was published at one point in other regions by Lajek. But Karateko, it looks like, was the re uh, publisher for uh, Japan. And there we go with all the artwork around the outside. Showing uh, right over my shoulder here the uh, score you need for additional base. A lot of the arcade games are doing that. How many points do you need before you can keep going? Oh, very fun. Oh, you have it on multi -K. That's awesome. All right, so here we go. Uh, the uh, uh, Track modes are getting better, so I'm actually sitting at the arcade cabinet waiting a little bit to see what happens because after loop and three we played, the track mode are, is, is looking really good. And um, let's check out some of the dip switches in the back. Uh, every arcade cabinet, uh, they're going to get progressively more and more advanced technologically. And in the back, you can switch things uh, on the uh, system to make changes to it. Like, for example, this is switching it from upright or cocktail and then uh, how many lives you're going to get on one uh, credit, and then when, it, when it's a bonus life, which is very interesting because the artwork that they gave us around the cabinet says 10,000 for an additional base, and right now it's set for 5,000. So anyway, let's uh, put a quarter in, and oh, there you go. At the very top, uh, th this version we're playing is the publisher Lejac, and you can see it at, uh, on the main ship as the publisher. 
Oh, it should be. <laughs> Thanks, Chip Dune. Appreciate it. All right, so here we go. Putting a quarter in and push and start. This is Kamikaze, and I can't control anything yet. We wait for the ship to come out. So, yeah, I'm moving the joystick. Nothing's happening yet. All right, so uh, looks like for sound effects, we're not getting any sound effects. Wow, okay, so first ship falls through, leaves a larger explosion, and I'm already uh, dead first try. But uh, they're going into groups, so it's almost like they're breaking them apart. And you can see when they fall, they leave this um, explosion or shockwave that comes across. There you go. So, Oh, yeah, you got to get out of the way or you're going to get it blown up. Yeah, loving the art around the screen. And I love it when we get this for any of the arcade cabinets where we can kind of experience a little of what you'd see in the arcades. All right, but we don't have the sound effects. That doesn't mean they don't exist. They're just not emulated. But um, for what we're, we're seeing and how the game plays, uh, very typical for the time. I really enjoy the shockwave effect of the enemies. Oh, they're going to destroy me, though, if I don't do something about it. I really want to know if we can take out the ship at the top. Or if that comes into play at some point. But, yeah, we, we, they're lining them up like columns. Like it's... Um, oh, there we go. So... I got to a point where now I'm not controlling and the ship is leaving. Let's see what happens. Oh, he's going to come back. But I want to blow it up. I want to see if we fight them as a boss at the end. So it looks like it's changing the point values. No, he got me on that one. There we go. Already game over. So three lives. Typical of most of the arcade cabinets at the time. Yeah, I, I agree. Kamikaze. Play Kamikaze. Let's put another quarter in and push start. Here we go. I want to see if we can get further to see the next part because we're now starting to see games that don't just have the same thing and then repeat them with more uh, difficulty. We're now seeing the games come... Okay, yeah, so this has a really interesting rhythm. You can see here... I'm trying to see if I can figure out the strategy. Oh, I've already lost that one. And it got me. I, I came too close. I'm just trying to take them out as soon as they show up. Right there on the bottom... Yeah, go, 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 and then try to see if we can get it before they drop. And there you go, it dropped one. And I don't I don't know what happens if the UFO comes down to the bottom. Does anyone know if this game is released as a different name? Because we're also going to cover games from other regions, if they have a different name or if they're significantly different than the original uh, in Japan. There we go. Yeah, I, I agree. It, it, it has enough twists and... Uh, considering we played so many clones, like exact copies of Space Invaders, it's refreshing to see different game modes or different twists on the fixed shooter formula. All right, I want to see what happens when the UFO comes all the way. Oh, and let's pause there, let the ship leave, and then it comes back, and I'm guessing it's reloading, but it's uh, interesting. It's a little intermission. I can't move the joystick until the ship comes back. <laughs> all right, here we go. Oh no, it got me. <laughs> I do notice that the longer you play, the shockwave of the ships gets bigger and bigger. You can see how... Wow, yeah. Uh, uh, frantic, but so fun. Okay, we're going to try one more time. Notice how I can't put my initials in. It's just saying whoever was first got that score. All right, let's put another quarter in. Uh, going again. I want to see if we can clear the board, possibly destroy the ship. Or it's just this, and that is the game. And it looks like I can hit them before they come down the tunnel. I want to wait for the UFO and see what the UFO does. Oh! Okay, the UFO is a, a screen-clearing uh, effect. Okay, so that's, that means I better target that. Oh, man. Okay, so... Uh, I really enjoy the differences and how they change it, and the um, the color work is a pretty basic a standard for what we'd see at the time, so nothing big on the graphics, graphic-wise, but um, the way it plays is uh, really, really fun. Okay, here we go. Let's see if I can get back there. Yeah, it looks like it's just going to keep building up and building up, but there's nothing else after this. At least there's no there's no uh, boss or a change, but oh, you can see the ship at the top is counting down. So it's how many sh how many smaller vessels are left to come out, and I, I bet it just keeps going higher and higher until you have nothing left yet. Okay, Astro Invader. So we we're probably going to be able to see Astro Invader whenever it's released in other regions too. This one is the first release we've had. 
Kamikaze. And possibly the other versions may have sound. Oh, that was close. <laughs> go, go, go. Oh, they got it. Yep, that's it. So much fun. And it looks like it just c continues building up ships until the columns get to the point where you can't uh, stop, and then they just dro keep dropping over and over again. But um, I would guess it's uh, using the formula of one shot at a time, like space... <laughs> There we go. Game over. Keeps going, keeps going. But uh, it has that drive of wanting you to play more and more. Lots of fun. So that is Kamikaze in the arcades. And for the time, that, that is excellent. Um, I would say uh, four stars, maybe even four and a half. If the chat has any suggestions, we can go with those. Because I, I would say let's let, let's go high. Because this, this is above average. This is an excellent game. Um, especially for the time. So I'm thinking four, four and a half. Not necessarily five, but uh, f uh, four and a half because of how well it plays. All right, so that was Kamikaze. Let's move on to our next game. This is R2D Tank. <laughs> Are they using the name from Star Wars? I'm not sure. All right, so let's take a look at the artwork. Looks like for the advertisement flyer, this is for Red Tank, which is another game that is the Japanese version of it, which would be the same as R2D Tank. Uh, yeah, so it looks like Red Tank and R2D Tank, um, I, I remember now, this is uh, actually two games. I couldn't find a lot of information on Red Tank. Uh, this uh, The sequel is R2D Tank, but not necessarily a true sequel of what you think. It's just a, an upgraded version. So they just uh, modified the code, changed, uh, uh, just made it so it's a little bit smoother and, and runs better. And then R2D Tank is, is that game. So the one we're playing is like a combination of Red Tank and R2D Tank. And there's our arcade PCB. Yeah, it's like the USO. Uh, who do you, who the troops would want in the USO, right? All right, so here we go. We got joystick and a uh, full range of control, at least four-way joystick for the tank and fire. And full color game. All right. That is great. They better be. Full color. Black and white was, was so 70s. It is the 80s. It's the 80s, man. All right, so we have no manual for the game, so we're just going to go right in. This is R2D Tank, released May 1980. In the arcades by Sigma Enterprises. And there we go. We got a uh, side view arcade of artwork. And we have lots of instructions over on the far left side. <laughs> yeah, they're doing the, the Marilyn Monroe uh, from the, uh, uh, the, the movie that she was in, right? Okay, so for instructions. Handle player tank. Control lever extinguish dot. Oh, extinguish dots. Ah, so it is dot collecting that we saw first or closely uh, first with head on. And then red take is the enemy tank fires approaching enemy. Uh, so you're trying to just get around and collect all the dots. And uh, it looks like it's going to display different patterns every time we play. So here we go, putting a quarter in. This is R2D tank or red tank. And going to push start for one player, which means I think we have a computer controlled tank. There we go. So you can see at the bottom, the uh, the controls are nice. Oh, it, it actually plays pretty well. It's not playing relative controls. So I'm actually, when I go down, the tank goes down. When I go up, the tank goes up. And it's um, d different because even on Atari, most tank controls we've seen for arcade and co home consoles, it's um, using controls where you turn left and right, or, or they're trying to simulate the tracks of the tank. But this is a lot easier. No, the, I guess the red are mines. I haven't run over them yet, but it looks like I need to... The instructions say collect all the green dots, and then... Let's just run over one and see... Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, red dots are mines. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to do that, because uh, the art was technically for red tank, not R2D tank, but we're combining both of them just because I, I couldn't find a lot of information on red uh, tank. But uh, R2D tank, we're able to emulate. And I was not paying attention. The red tank just destroyed me there. R2D tank. So you can see they are changing the patterns on the screen. And I guess the patterns change every time. Come on. 
<laughs> I want to put some extra money in and see if the second player can join in. So let's see if we turn on... Uh, we, we didn't have an example of the control panel, so I, don't, I want to see if the second player is alternating or if we play at the same time. So let's try this again. Uh, it does look like alternating. So I put in enough quarters for two people and it's still the same thing where you you just alternate, collect all the dots. Once you collect all the dots, then you move on to the next screen. And I think they give us a different pattern after that. Yeah. But that shouldn't be inconsistent. Like it's not, it's not really doing much different. I'd say the controls are good. The controls are different because it's uh, it's not doing the uh, relative controls or a tank controls. It's doing a lot easier controls. It's by a company though I'm not familiar with, Sigma Incorporated. And the red tank, why get rid of the red tank? Because it's just gonna come right back. Come on, let's go. And we do our, we are getting sound effects from uh, the back end. They're a little quieter, but um, uh, most of these games we played, some of them, we're not getting any of the sound emulated. Oh man, just running into me blows me up. Okay. <laughs> I want to see if we can finish before. So yeah, now it's the second player is going. Does the second player is still controlled by the one player uh, uh, controller? I was really hoping for uh, competition against it, but uh, it's. It's it's the, the same uh, that we've seen alternating play to to play the game, but uh, I, I want to see if the patterns actually change. And it is a collect the dots game. What was the first game that had the dots? Because Head On was one of the first we saw. But what was the first video game that actually had you collecting dots? And that was the goal. When you finish collecting the dots, then you move on to the next map. <laughs> Every time I get a nice little sound effect when it goes over. Okay, we will see that one. Spiders is, is, will be coming up. I know that one for sure. <laughs> just running into the other one just destroys us. All right, so that was R2D tank or red tank. So for the time, uh, that one does very well for the arcades. I'm going to go for four stars for R2D tank. It is a tank game. We've seen plenty since the early 70s. But um, it does a, a good job with changing up the formula just a little bit. I dig it. All right, moving on to our next game, playing every video game in order of release. This is Stratovox. Stratovox. Let's see what the artwork looks like. The first talking video game. At least it says on the advertisement flyer. We'll be back. Help me. Lucky. Very good. They just got right to the point. It's the first talking video game. Now, is that just hype? Or is that really the first talking video game? Stratovox. There's the back of the advertisement flyer. Looks like it's cries of stranded astronauts. Haunting the darkness. Defying the forces of evil. Echoing throughout the vast galaxy. And throughout the video game industry. The Voices of Stratovox. That's what I thought. Is Stratovox really the first? We haven't seen uh, Sinistar yet. So it says we're going to get points for exploding alien ships to smithereens, dodge lethal showers of enemy rockets, and a, a uh, 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 escape the clutches of evil aliens and turn them on the crew. That's right. <laughs> Sinistar was the first game to make fun of us. We haven't had anything that's uh, de degraded us while we're playing the game. Maybe Sinistar is the first. As action continues and skill builds, the alien attack becomes progressively harder to repel several squads. You can now attack together and make uh, make off with more than one astronaut. Okay, so it's a rescue game, and we've seen a few of those. Uh, a handful. When your photon rocket's blasted by a direct alien hit, the planet's surface ruptures into explosive booms and triggers. A prism run of flashing colors throughout the galaxy. <laughs> That's right, and we'll run into that one too. This advertisement flyer seems like it's being marketed toward us, the player. Because usually these advertisement flyers aren't explaining a lot about how the game is played. It's more of how much it's going to make you money if you buy it. And looks like this one's by Taito. That is great. And there's the example of the arcade cabinet. The PCB and for control panel. Terrible picture of control panel, but looks like one joystick and one fire button. Yeah, yeah. Th that's, that's going to be a fun one too. All right, so uh, left, right, and fire. There's our arcade marquee. <laughs> really enjoyed the artwork. Uh, got a comic book feel to it. 
probably the first we've seen of a comic book look for any video game. All right, so there is our screenshot. Games played in full color in 1980. And for different versions, we do have a bootleg version that we'll be bypassing. But here we go. Let's step up to the arcades. It's May 1980, and this is Stratavox in the arcades by Sun Electronics. There you go. Sun Electronics. This would be the very first game of Sun Electronics that will be then turned into Sunsoft. So you will you will definitely hear Sunsoft in the future. Really big game developer. So this was developed by Sunsoft, and then uh, looks like Taito published it. And we got all the awesome artwork. So here's what we'd see around the uh, cabinet uh, when you look directly at the cabinet. Right above this, uh, it's not there, but that's where the arcade marquee would be. <laughs> that's true. I'm getting Darius vibes. If anyone's familiar with that game, it's another shooter that has a lot of fish elements. But that uh, yeah, the ship uh, with fish fish looking kind of makes me feel that way yeah right <laughs> and that's right taito did develop the the darius games all right so they have instructions on the far left but they're really hard to see yeah and uh i haven't played this one before so we're going to be enjoying and reacting to this for the very first time you can see uh, uh the attract mode has given us an idea of what the game is on the far right side we have players on the planet and those are i guess the astronauts and there's uh, ships that are going to capture the astronauts and it looks like they're grabbing them and you gotta uh, get them free extra score five thousand so when you get to five thousand you get your extra ship so push on push on push on get get that five thousand yeah i love the look of it all right let's see if we got any other options so behind the scenes in the back of the arcade cabinet we can change the number of lives uh, replenishing the astronauts, two attackers, flip screen. So what I'm going to do for this game, I hope we have the audio, but I'm going to raise the, uh, the volume just a little bit, just so if we can hear them talking. So if it gets too loud, just let me know. Going to raise it just a little bit and see if we can hear a little bit more of the game. All right, we're going. Quarter in. Push and start. I'm listening. <laughs> okay, yeah, they're moving quick. And they already picked one up. That was so fast. Help me. Oh, and they, it is. The game is talking. Yeah, the patterns of the ships is very unique. Very different than what we've seen. Galaxian was the first one we saw. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing a terrible job at protecting my buddies. But uh, Galaxian was the first one we saw of having ships maneuver this way. Lucky. <laughs> Yeah, and understanding that I want to raise it a little bit more so we can <laughs> to hear them talk. It's 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 crazy. This is the first game we've heard them talk. And on the home cons uh, console side, the Magnavox Odyssey told us on the box that they would talk, but we didn't hear it. So I, did, I wasn't sure if the emulation didn't uh, have the talking. Lucky, lucky, lucky. <laughs> yeah, they're talking to us when they get the score up. That's awesome. Okay, this is amazing. This is another one of those gems of... Wow, they got me. <laughs> Are they reproducing uh, voices that we're going to hear in other arcade games? Help me. Help me. <laughs> this, is, this is the first game we ever heard talk to us. Help me. And so the advertisement flyer said this was the first one. If someone wants to confirm, is this the very first video game that talked to us? We had video games claim they would talk to us, but we didn't actually hear it. <laughs> so cool. There we go. Come on, get it, get it. Oh, we're right there. We're almost it for an extra life. Here we go. Yeah, there it is. Now they are... Um, making it so I cannot shoot the aliens on the planet. If I move to the far right, that's as far as I can go, so if they're about to grab one of my buddies, I can't I can't attack them yet. I have to wait <laughs> I got I have to wait for them to uh, cross the top of the screen before I can get them. Wow. But yeah, movement of the ships is amazing. It's it's much more advanced than anything we've seen. So this is Stratavox. So this is it. This is the first talking video game. Thanks for the confirmation, RK Jeff. All right, here we go. Let's put another quarter in. 
I'm really gonna listen now for everything. Help me. We'll be back. <laughs> Help me. Very good. Very good. Help me. Very Ladies good. and gentlemen, this is 1980, and the video game is talking to me. There we go. All lucky, right. Lucky, 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 <laughs> lucky, 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 okay, so an, lucky, an alternate lucky. name or version is Speak and Rescue. Okay, great. All right, so for games like this, we've seen Galaxian and a few others that were copying Galaxian, where the ships are actually making maneuvers across, but my controls are just left and right. I don't have a lot of freedom for my movement. Lucky, help me. Oh, I missed him! With the game talking to me, I feel more invested in their lives. No, no. Oh. <laughs> so they have different... <laughs> they got different flight patterns whenever they're picking up uh, other people. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like um, we're just going to keep rating all these uh, classics lucky, five stars lucky, because, lucky, lucky, man, uh, lucky, lucky. so iconic. Sounds it sounds great. Sound effects too. Just everything with it uh, r runs really well. <laughs> Especially in the explosion. Part of me just wants to get blown up uh, to see everything flash like that. Is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to hear every voice. So I can I can make a help me. Thank you. Lucky. <laughs> Lucky. And they return right back to the planet. Help me. Also, Help something me. else to note is we'll the be star be field back. in the background is moving uh, differently than everything else. We've seen star fields in other video games uh, uh, scroll vertically Help to me. give you the illusion that you're moving forward, but this one's giving us the illusion that we're um, on one uh, one moon that's orbiting another planet. <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> That would have taken too much processing power. Not a chance. <laughs> okay, that is a blast. Another thing we, we need to do is every time we get to a game that has uh, the point that I don't want to stop, I want to keep playing it, we got to give it at least four, at least, if it's hard to stop playing it. But uh, let, let's go one more time into Stratavox. I really want to get uh, th this recording. And let me know, too, also, if the, how the audio sounds, if we need to raise it even more, or if it's too loud now. Because <laughs> some of the high-pitched bleeps really get up there. Oh, I missed them on that one. I also like how they're showing the aliens on the You'll left, like we know who's coming, or how many are, 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 are coming up next. The total okay. amount of waves coming in. No! <laughs> Help me. Yeah, it is not based on poor controls. This is just because my timing is off, and I know it, and I want to get my timing better. Okay. Qualities of a very, very good game. Thank you so much for the feedback. Appreciate it. <laughs> Help me. Come on, come on. There we go. All right. <laughs> How about there on the explosion? Does that one go a little bit too loud? Because <laughs> it really wants you to know you're dead. <laughs> I can't tell. It, whenever we, sh I, I know we can't shoot the the, the astronauts. We're only uh, able to shoot the ships. But uh, <laughs> that is great. All right, so that was Stratovox, and I'm uh, with the consensus of the chat. We're going to do five stars. First talking video game, uh, or a game that talked to us. And uh, I think I said before, we had some games that um, they... <laughs> we had some games that claimed they were going to talk on the Magnavox Odyssey. We heard some that were supposed to talk to us. We didn't hear that, though. So this would be the very first talking video game. <laughs> yeah, I think he said that, too. All right, so moving on to our next game, playing every video game in order of release. The very next game to be released is 
High Res Adventure number one, Mystery House. And this one is very, very special. Uh, <laughs> this one is the very first game to be released by Sierra Online. This was uh, programmed by Ken Williams, and this was made by... Oh, yes. In, all in caps. Uh, thanks, Casey Club Kirby. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the artwork for it. This is the front of the box, and that's a good way to sell a game in 1980. Call it High Res Adventure. When we boot this up, uh, everyone that's here in the chat and also viewing on YouTube, you're going to laugh because it is, does not look high res now. But that's a good way to sell a game back then when you have so many other uh, computer games that have come out. They say Sierra Sierra Adventure. They put it together into one. And there's the back of the box by Ken and the, the king and queen of adventure games, Ken and Roberta Williams. Here is their very first release, Sierra Online, and with their original address in the back. As you near the front of the large, old Victorian house, you feel an unexplainable tension. A small voice whispers inside your head. Open the door and step inside, if you dare. Upon entering, the door closes and locks behind you. Inside the house lies murder and mystery. It's up to you to solve them. Who is the killer and who are his, and, and what are his motives? Where does the secret passageway lead to? Who is dropping those curious notes? And who will be the next victim? If you're not careful, it could be you. You cannot leave the property until you bring the killer to justice. Turn the knob and walk into Mystery House. Someone is waiting for you. There you go. Computer games is where we get a lot of our story and lore. Most of the consoles we've seen, and especially arcade games, there's no story. It's just you jump in and you play. And there you go. That is our lore for Mystery House. And here we go, an advertisement flyer for Mystery House. High Res Adventure number one. You can see it's on a, uh, a disc. This advertisement flyer says it runs for $24.95. <laughs> and you got to make sure your system has 48K <laughs> of memory. That's uh, kilobytes of memory. Thank you. Yes, I agree. Uh, what is an adventure game? According to the dictionary, adventure is a hazardous or daring enterprise, an exciting experience. And on Chronologically Gaming, we consider adventure games... Uh, games that require more thought than any other game. No action, no, twi no, no twitch. And so we're, we're, we're not really going to classify games as action and adventure. It's going to be, if anything involves where you have to do a, a deliberate actions, that is an action game. And then anything that involves like pointing and clicking or having to think about something, solve puzzles. Um, and you can see here, this is going to be a text adventure game. Adventure games for us are going to be straight up adventure. It, there, there is not any action involved because we're going to be playing so many games. We have to differentiate. So this is the Apple II version, which was the first version to come out, at least to my knowledge. And there you go. An example of the disc going on the actual floppies uh, for the, the first Apple IIs. Five and a quarter floppy disks. And uh, you can see that Sierra went above and beyond. This was the very first release. And you can see the company logos in the top. It, it just has a good quality to uh, the, the product you're buying. So cool. And there's another example um, uh, through online systems, which is the same thing. <laughs> another adventure game. That'd be Al Low. And we'll get to those later. All right, so there you go. There's your high-res adventure game. And we do not have a manual. So how this will play as far as commands, we'll, we're just going to wing it and see what happens. Here we go is May 5th, 1980, and this is Mystery House on the Apple II, which means I can put my controller down because we're going to do all keyboard here. And the copy that we're getting here, um, th this game is public domain, and so they're going to give us a little tips and hints uh, in the game. Um, some of these have been cracked, but legally cracked, because they're going to show um, usually an information about how to play. Hopefully, they'll give us some commands to try. So there we go. From a great moment in history, Mystery House, the first graphic adventure was created in 1980 by Sierra Online founders Ken and Roberta Williams, released to the public domain in 1987 to celebrate their seventh anniversary. <laughs> so it was already public domain in 87. Anyone could grab it. We encourage you to copy this game for yourself, share it, and uh, now that it's free, we can no longer take calls for the game. So if you need help with this, we can't call the Sierra hotline. And uh, sadly, Sierra does not exist anymore. It's been bought out and uh, bought out by another company and another company. 
It was at one point Vivendi, and then Vivendi was bought by another's. We're not going to go into a lot of details of the the, the video game business market, but um, I would say for adventure games, they were so niche and so amazing for the time because without what we have now, the information age, you can get all the answers you want. But for this game, if this was something you bought and then you put it in your computer, you could spend months and months playing the game because you get to a point where you can't get past and there are no answers. The answers come from asking someone else or telling that someone, I got to this point in the game and I'm stuck. What do I do now? All right, so here we go. Mystery House. Enter G for game, I for instruction. So we're going to do I and see what it says. High Res Adventure. One of the most fascinating, challenging games available for your Apple computer. Winning is quite a challenge, and yes, it is. This game is very, very difficult. Uh, well, nowadays, you can just look at most of the answers, but still extremely hard. A lot of the puzzles are pretty cryptic. Uh, this is a game where you may take hours to move and weeks to solve a puzzle. There you go. That's how difficult it is. Shown in the instruction. High Res Adventure number one takes place in an old house with many rooms. As you enter the house, seven other persons will be in the living room. Eventually, they are dispersed throughout the house, and you have to start finding them dead. You must find the killer before he or she ends up killing you. Maybe that means the killer is a she. Your progress to the house is two word commands which usually contain a verb and a noun but aren't always in that order and this is what we've seen with typical text adventure games there's one thing though that sets this apart this is the very first text adventure game that includes graphics we've played about 10 text adventure games on the channel from the 70s and now we're in the 80s it's the 80s we need something better so this is the very first text adventure game that includes a graphic a high res graphic so, for examples, we can say uh, water on, open door. If a set of words doesn't seem to be working, try different terminology. If you find a staircase, you may try upstairs or go stairs. Some actions you take are get, drop, go, look, read, climb, hit, kill, kill. There we go. We can be the killer. So when you play these kinds of games, uh, the original ones were on mainframe computers in uh, the 60s. And so they're taking that idea and translating them to a home computer that you could play yourself. And they were very rudimentary. Like when you had to move, you had to do north, south, east, and west and actually write down or draw the maps of the game. And th this one gets to that point where it's that difficult. We would have to draw the house because apparently this house, what I've been told, has 20, 30 rooms to it. So it can get very difficult on where to go and how, and how to play it. So you can go in directions like north, south, east, and west, up and down, and they make it easier for us. They can put in instead of typing the whole word for north. But um, <laughs> yes, they, 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 these are going to be very, very hard. But you can say go, go hole, go door, go hole, go gate. Uh, and it looks like those will work. And then uh, the top of the screen is north, the bottom of the screen is south, the left side's west, and the uh, right side's east. And if you want to get a closer look at something, you, s you say look object. Uh, so you have to think kind of rudimentary because the, since the text parser only allows two things, you have to think pretty simplified. Uh, we are going to see the evolution of this change too over time. We're going to see text parsers get more and more advanced as all these computers come out in the 80s. <laughs> yeah, we don't have anybody to ask, but we got uh, seven people currently watching the show. So hopefully I'll get someone to tell me what to do if because I, I know I'm going to get stuck. It's the first Sierra Adventure game. Uh, so there we go. Uh, we can also um, send a copy. There we go. If the, if it doesn't load or you get munched by a, a disk drive, you can send our broken disk with $5 to, online, <laughs> to Sierra Online and they'll replace the game for us. So that's pretty cool. So at this, uh, they're giving us a, a, some help too here. At the start of the game, there's going to be seven other people in the house with you. Their names and occupation and hair color are as follows. <laughs> Everyone write them down. <laughs> so there's all the people that are with us. Tom, Sam, Sally... And then Dr. Joe, uh, Dr. Green, Joe, Bill, and Daisy. Not Daisy. <laughs> That's true. Yes, I remember doing that with my friends. King's Quest was the big one for me where I asked people, how did you do this part? How did you get that, that part? But yes, uh, everybody in your group of friends or network or family were the ones that help you with it. All right, here we go. We are beginning, which means it's loading now. We have a grave digger, a surgeon, a butcher, a cook. It doesn't tell us who we are, though. Who are we in the game besides the other seven people? So there you go. High res. And another thing to keep in mind, uh, Ken Williams, when programming this game, he didn't have a drawing program. 
The Apple II did not have one available, so he didn't go in and do a drawing program like we're familiar with Paint on, on Microsoft. This is before all of that. Uh, this is uh, before Microsoft DOS. So uh, to program this game, to this picture you see, the high-res picture, he had to know the column and row of where it's going to be pl uh, placed and then put the coordinates in for that pixel and then drawing using coordinates for each pixel. Extremely time-consuming, but Ken, again, king of adventure. Props to him for all that. <laughs> You're in front of a yard, a, a yard of large abandoned Victorian house. Stone steps lead up to a wide porch. Uh, go up. I don't understand what you mean. I want to go stair, stairs. Go stairs. Go stairs. Ha ha! See, there you go. You have to think of in the mind of uh, pl uh, playing the game. I have. Uh, never played this game. I've seen this feature on like a few um, television and movies, but I've actually never played it myself. So I'm having to think of the mindset of a two word parser. Go stairs, you're on the porch. Stone steps lead down to the front yard. So here we go, we're at the porch, so go door. Go door. The door is closed, open. Oh, gotta wait. And I'm trying different things. Open a door. There. Oh, yeah. Uh, go north. Or can I just do go in? And it looks like my backspace isn't working. Backspace probably is programmed to a different one. Go in. Oh, okay. North didn't work. Go north. Uh, enter. <laughs> so another thing about adventure games is whenever you whenever you try to uh, do commands, the commands that you're expecting to like you, you it makes sense to us, but you have to think of it like the computer would think it. So you you almost start turning into a computer when you play adventure games because you have to think of what the computer would see. Go inside. I don't know how to go uh inside. <laughs> what about uh kill door. I love that one. I don't understand what you mean. Uh, go. No. Uh, but they said north was up, so go go in. Um, enter house. <laughs> So we 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 open the door. At least they they could have locked the door. That would have been more difficult. But the, the the difficulty we're having is just going inside the house. Walk forward. I don't know how to walk a forward. <laughs> I don't know how to walk a forward. How do you go in? Um, go. Uh, what about just north? I can't go in that direction. Can we go west? You can't go in that direction. Can we go east? No, so we can't go any direction, so um, what about walk? I don't understand what walk means. Walk forward? I don't know how to walk a forward. See, if if we have the door open and we want to go in the house, for the first adventure game, what, what, what command would you use that has two words that would let the game know that you want to go inside the house? Enter, no, enter house didn't work. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you, right? Because with an adventure game, if this was the only thing you had, and you had your home computer, you would spend so much time trying to get, to understand what the, what the, uh, the, the game would want you to say to go in. I don't know how to go it in. Go door. The door has been closed and, oh, wait. We, it was it. It was go door, go door. <laughs> yes, and or, or bribe guard. <laughs> so go door was it. Okay, and th this is all seven people, high resolution people. I might add, you're in entry hall. Doorways are east, west, south. Stairway goes up. So uh, we have seven people here. Let's go up. What? You don't understand up? What about go north? There we go. Uh, in, oh, go south. <laughs> so we made it in. What about get note? Oh, it's getting dark. Oh, and we did get the note. So the, the note's now gone. <laughs> Kill family. <laughs> 
I don't know how to kill a family. Well, I guess that means we're not the murderer. Someone else is going to be the murderer. <laughs> That's another thing I loved about adventure games. Trying out different things to see what the computer knew you were saying. In fact, I even had a, a, a thought of designing my own adventure game whenever I was younger where every command would work. Like you could say anything you want and the, the game would know what you, were, what you wanted. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the third person on the left is. I hope they're not a nun. See, now I want to try all the ones, all, all the things from chat. <laughs> I don't know how to order something. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so th this is what you would see typically for uh, the text adventure games. And we've done these on the other ones on the channel. And we tried different things out for the text parser. The big thing with this one is the high-res graphics, the picture. It's not just um, uh, the text command uh, that you're, or the text on the screen. We actually have something to look at, so we don't have to use our complete imagination. But uh, so in, so ingenious for the time and, and so fun for the time, you would spend a lot of time uh, trying different things. And it would be fun, at least for me, to have other people there because other people would say, try this, say that, type this. And so you'd try all the different things and type different things. And then eventually you'd get in the groove of what the game expects you to, uh, to have. <laughs> yes. Considering other home computers we saw back in the 70s, definitely. All right, so I want to see if I can read the note that I just picked up. So I picked up the note. There we go. Oh, valuable jewels are hidden in this house. Finders keepers. And that's a throwback to Colossal Cave Adventure, the very first text adventure game on uh, Mainframe, where you just go down and you find a treasure and then you make your way back and you uh, uh, put the treasure in a, a place to hold. And so they're doing the same thing here. And uh, fun fact, right now, uh, Ken and Roberta Williams are designing a virtual reality Colossal Cave Adventure. To, as a throwback to the very first adventure game, but you're going to do it in, in VR. That's that's the project they're working on right now. <laughs> yeah, it does kind of look that way. All right, so that's I'm done reading. Whoa. Oh, I, I, I don't know how I go back. Go back. So I'm now stuck on... Re Can I just read note again? <laughs> and it's, it's on this... <laughs> Eat note, yes. <laughs> it doesn't get that one. I, I do love that as we uh, progressively get more and more technological with these adventure games, we're going to be able to um, uh, play. Uh, we're going to be able to try different things and the game will understand the different things we type or do. So much fun. Okay, so that was Mystery House. So for the time, what you could play at home uh, on your computer, th this is uh, top tier. Uh, and it's also something that's very influential because after this, Sierra's gonna keep pushing and pushing more things on the computer and they're gonna be way ahead of the curve. Uh, it's, it's gonna be really uh, fun and exciting to see that. So I'm thinking four, four and a half for high res adventure. Now uh, on the channel, Chronologically Gaming, we're not really showcasing certain genres or saying one genre is better than the other. I'm a kind of a, a jack of all trades video game guy. So I enjoy um, everything. So I'm, I'm thinking four, four and a half. <laughs> and I'm still getting commands from the chat. Love it. <laughs> all right. So let's do, um, because of uh, the first one and how it's the first to have uh, graphics with the, the text part of it. So I'm going to go four and a half. For, for my rating because of, I would just would have loved to have this in 1980. Uh, and also considering everything else we've seen for a home computer, not just Apple II, all the other home computers, TRS-80, the uh, uh, Texas Instruments one, that we, we'll get into all of those, but uh, a four and a half, yes, for historical reasons, of course. All right, so that is uh, the time that we're gonna have for uh, tonight. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, all the people in chat and YouTube, really appreciate it. We will check, uh, we'll, we'll catch you guys next time playing more games from the 80s in order of release. Have a great night and a great weekend. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9 p.m. Central, so join us and let us know if we miss any games along the way. This video would not be possible without RetroArch and LaunchBox. Please tell your friends there's some crazy guy out there trying to play every single video game. You can always check out Chronologically Gaming on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We will catch you next time.